Welcome to yet another episode of United Guns of America. I am your host, Brian Redman, and today we are doing a pistol review. And this pistol review is one of my favorite pistols. Uh, it is one of the best pistols, in my opinion, ever to be made. So you're talking about like greatest pistols of all time. You're talking about your Colt 1911s. Um, you're talking about <clears throat> your 38s, your 357 Magnums. Uh, you're talking about your Glocks, and you're talking about you know one of my personal favorites, which is none other than the Beretta 92 FS. Uh, the Beretta 92 FS is one of the greatest firearms ever created and ever to be used in our country. It is one of the first firearms that I was actually uh, privileged to shoot. Uh, it was one of the, well actually it was the first firearm that I was actually trained on how to use uh, by my father. Shout out to my pops, uh, Herbert Redman Sr. Love you daddy. Rest in peace. Um, but one of the one of the most, I guess, just special things about this firearm is just the quality, the way it's made, um, the way it has performed, you know, time and time again over years and, and thousands of rounds. This firearm has been exceptional. It um, I believe it is still used in the military today. I believe they use in the 96. Or the night is it the 96A? I believe it is, but the 92FS was like one of the best pistols ever made. One of my favorite firearms to shoot. Uh, I have carried this firearm as my EDC, and this particular firearm is a little near and dear to me because it was my father's and is passed down to me. So, uh, without further ado, here is my 92. Boom! So, this particular model is the 92FSC also known as the 92 fs or the 92 compact um and basically what that is it's like one of the first you know compact um firearms to be you know used and carried uh used amongst law enforcement um used in the military i mean this is just out and out just a sweet firearm it shoots smoothly it handles beautifully the action the feel everything i just pretty much i mean and like i said i may be a little biased because it was like the first firearm that i was trained on but i love this model of firearms um i am actually one of the last things that i'm going to get from for the redmond armory when it is finished is i want a, another full size 92 fs I uh, had one. It was the first gun that I ever purchased. However, through life experience, uh, I lost it. It was stolen from me. Uh, and it was actually stolen from me by someone who was very, very near and dear to me. It was a close friend. Um, and I learned a, how much was that gun when I bought it? Uh, $800 lesson. Uh, it's an $800 lesson. So, um, yeah. But I definitely uh, miss it and wish I still had it. Actually, it was a, it was a $900 lesson that I learned because I had a, a modification on it too. I had an internal uh, guide rod laser on that one. But that's neither here nor there and that was some um, shoot 15 years ago maybe. But that gun is gone and it's gone and it's all good. But uh, at the end of the day I still have my father's which is definitely uh, been a favorite of mine to shoot. Uh, it was actually the first gun that I actually got my CCW on. I mean, I just have all of the confidence in the world with this firearm. So, I'm going to go over this firearm today. Just go over some of the key points like I've done with the other ones. I've gotten a lot of good feedback from the Glock 22 and the Glock 17 uh, reviews that I've done. So, hey, I hope this one uh, serves a good purpose as well. And let's just get started. So, first and foremost, this is a 9mm uh, firearm. It is a compact firearm. <clears throat> which helps with your everyday carry. Uh, it's not as bulky as a full size, and everyone knows that when it comes to full size and me, I am a fan of the full size firearm. However, if you're carrying something small, I always say you should have at least a minimum of 11 rounds or more, 10 rounds or more. Uh, so, like 10 and 1, I think you're good. Anything less than that as a primary everyday carry, don't recommend it, won't recommend it, can't change my mind about it. So, um, this one here, it is a uh, 13 and 1. So it's 13 rounds in the magazine. Magazine is right here. You can see that. Boom, bam. And there is one that you can carry in the chamber. 
so that'll give you a total of 14 rounds. Um, this particular firearm, it is an all metal slide. That means the, the slide is metal and the frame is metal. Now, something very fancy about this one, a couple of things actually. Um, this has the official uh, Pietro Beretta uh, wood, uh, wood grips on here with the uh, seal on it as well. <coughs> Very nice, fancy hand grips. These are the hand grips that my father put on this firearm. This is one of the upgrades that he made to it. And he also got the Trijicon night sights, which have now been worn out. So I need to get those actually replaced on them. Uh, just haven't gotten around to doing it. Um, one of the things that I did to this as well is that I uh, actually had the slide polish. And I believe that now, just because of the wear and tear that this has had being a blued firearm, with it being all black essentially, uh, I believe I'm going to go ahead and get the frame polished as well, just so it can be sexy like it is. Uh, like I like it was now where it's got like the two-tone going, but I think I'm going to go ahead and get that polished as well and get the frame and the slide polished, leaving the accents black. Accents meaning, you know, your uh, slide release, um, your uh, the safety uh, decocker, uh, the hammer, and things like that. I'll probably leave those black, but that's all talked about later, and that'll be done at a different time, and I'll show you guys that. But... Uh, just getting back to some of the other things, this firearm is a little bit different than the uh, Glocks that I've done before. One of the things that's different about this is the firing um, mechanism. The ones that I showed you before, those were <coughs> excuse me, firing pin. And this one is actually has a hammer. So if you see this guy right here, that is the hammer. And that guy right there strikes the fire. Man, that's beautiful the way that you can see that. Strikes that firing pin. So when you do pull the trigger, and everybody knows that this gun is actually safe. All right. So when you have this guy back, this guy actually just drops like that. And boom. <coughs> Another thing about this gun, too, is what this is what they call double action. Double action firearm simply means that you have the action of this guy when you pull it. The trigger, it's, you have to have the hammer that actually goes back like this as you pull it. You will see that. That's what it does. It goes all the way back. And then, boom. Once it goes back and it fires that first time, then it will stay back like that. And then you can you don't have as long as a pull. But that double action means that you have essentially like that longer pull to where that hammer actually goes through that full cycle. Boom. Then it fires. But you don't have to keep doing that. Once it fires like that that first time that hammer stays back like this and then it'll just bang 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 but that first pull is a little bit longer um than before and it's something that i personally i'm used to it because like i said before i was trained on this firearm so it's something that i'm used to um i don't have a problem with that longer pull that first time and i can actually feel it because of the way this firearm is so well made i can feel it and i can feel the tension in the trigger i can feel where it's at so I know when that trigger has reached its reset point and I can use this firearm. I'm very proficient with this guy. I trust my life with this firearm. Um, but definitely um, it is a little bit different. And also it has the decocking um, mechanism for the safety. So when you're talking about what that does is basically when you pull this hammer back, that firing pin is exposed there. When that safety is up, boom, if it strikes that, then that gun will go bang. However, what that decocker does, it actually moves that out of the way so that the firing pin cannot be hit with the hammer. So basically, essentially, when this guy is pulled back like this, once you decock it, this gun will not fire. That gun will not fire no matter how many times you pull the trigger. You can even pull the hammer back, and it will not fire a round at all. So that's one of the best safety things about safety features about this firearm is that it is definitely very, very safe. When that decocker is, is engaged, that gun is not going to fire. Whether you drop it, kick it around, throw it out of an airplane, whatever you want to do with it, it will not fire. So, and that's definitely something to know. However, in my own personal opinion, when I do carry this, when I carry it, I do not carry it like this. And this is basically the firearm is actually safe. It's on its safe. It's uh, safe now. The safety is on. When I carry it <coughs> and I put this gun into the holster, it is always put into the holster this way. That red means that it is hot. That means that it is ready and that hammer will cock. That's half cocked there. Pull it all the way back and you can bang. Pull that trigger and it's going to work. Bang, bang, bang. 
So what that essentially does, when I put this gun in my holster and I'm carrying it, I carry it like this. One of the reasons why is because if I ever do have to pull it, the last thing that I want to do is to have to try to worry about disengaging that safety in time because you don't know what type of situation you may be in. If I need to pull that firearm within a, in, in a hurry, which in most situations you probably will have to, the last thing that I want to do is have to do that. Now, can I take that safety off with my thumb without actually looking at it? I absolutely can because I was trained that way. If you didn't train to do that, then I would definitely recommend that. Don't create that habit of having to do that. Keep that gun in the holster and know that when it's in the holster, it is ready. Now, when I take that gun off for the night and I'm not carrying it anymore, when I'm getting ready to go to bed, then I put that safety on and then I put it in the safe. That's what I usually do when I carry it, when I'm not carrying it. However, when I have that gun on my body, I keep that safety off because that way I know. Same thing when I carry my Glock. Glock doesn't have a decocker, so I know that when I pull that gun out of its holster, it is ready to go. That's how I treat any and every firearm, so it's not a problem for me. But I don't want to have to be in a situation to where I'm under stress um, or where, you know, I, I have my adrenaline pumping and I have to pull that firearm and I'm pulling that trigger if I need to and it's not firing because the safety is engaged. And I don't want to have to try to fumble and fiddle around with that because when you do get into a high stress situation, you lose certain functions like fine motor skills. Fine motor skills are basically things like being able to pinch, being able to pick up something that is small, being able to just manipulate little things. You lose that skill. So that's one of the things that I don't want to have to worry about, which is why I keep that safety off when it is actually in the holster and on my hip. Now, when I have it sitting down, I'm taking it off and getting ready to put it in the safe or I'm putting it up, I keep that safety on because it's not on my butt. So that's just one of the things that I do. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, that I make sure that <clears throat> this gun here, one of the things that's different as well, is that the way that the slide comes off. So with the Glock, you can see that you usually just pull that trigger. When it's empty, you pull the trigger, pull down the little uh, slide release there, and it comes right off. This one's a little bit different. Let me see if I can do this here. You actually have a button on this side that you have to engage. You have to push that button, and then you can do the slide release. Once you do that, there's that tension in the spring. She comes right off, and boom, there you go. Now you have your, uh, your guide rod with your spring and all that good stuff. And then there's all of your good clockwork inner workings there, all that good stuff right in there. You can see that actually needs to be wiped down a little bit. I can do that later. But when you're putting it back on, you simply just go ahead, line that guy up, pull that guy back, drop this guy, and boom, it's ready. So this is definitely very easy to field strip if you are in a situation where you have to do that. And also, too, one of the things that I like, because it has a metal slide, is just the action of that gun. That action is smooth. If you ever like get a chance to go to a gun store, grab one of these guys and just, in, and just use it, hold it, see how it feels. The action on this is smooth. I actually did treat this with frog lube, so it's even smoother than what it would be normally with like the regular uh, grease and oil, but I definitely love the action on the 92. Um, so like I said, that's 9mm. Uh, this also, because it is a compact, it does have the magazine with the extra little thumb piece there with the, with the grip so you can actually put your pinky finger there. So when I do have this here, boom, that's on there. Gives me a little bit more purchase with that little piece on the bottom there. So that little extension that's on the bottom of the magazine, it gives me a little bit more purchase. So when I do hold it, I can actually feel you know, more of the gun and have more of it in my hand, which gives me a more comfortable grip. So I do like that. Um, and like I said, with the other magazine you can that, that came with this, it was just a standard one. It had that little piece cut off, but you can buy one if you want one to have that extra piece on there. I never did. I didn't think find a use for it. Um, but other than that, that is pretty much it. This, like I said, is definitely a gun that I would recommend to people. Um, it is definitely something that is one of my favorites. Like I said, I love this firearm. It shoots extremely well. Anybody that has a 92, whether it's full size, whether it's the compact, I'm sure that they will give you nothing but rave reviews about it. Uh, the gun does have a little bit of weight on it because it's an all-metal frame, but that's just like with any other gun that's all-metal. It's definitely going to have a little bit more weight on it, but it shoots so smooth, and it's such a nice firearm. I don't see anyone complaining about it. So 
that is my 92F compact. Like I said, we went over the um, 9mm capacity, uh, 14 plus 1, 13 plus 1, so it gives you a 14 total. It has the shortened barrel, <coughs> and that's one of the differences when you, excuse me, that's one of the differences when you're talking about the full size 92FS. This little barrel is going to come out a little bit more to about maybe right there, which makes it a little bit longer, a little bit bigger. But other than that, that's pretty much it. It has the hammer fire, um, 13 plus 1 capacity, has the decocking for the safety to uh, disengage the firing pin so that it's safe. This one particularly has been upgraded with the Trigicon night sights um, on there as well. So it gives you the three glowing dots uh, when you have it in a low light situation or in, in just total darkness. Um, I actually did have the pop, the slide and the barrel polished on this particular one. Usually it's all black. Um, but other than that, that is it. So if you got any questions about this firearm, just put it in the comments below. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend this. Beretta is definitely one of the well made, best well made firearms in the world. I definitely love uh, the Berettas. I do have other videos coming up. I have a, a PX4 Storm. Uh, and I have a PX4 Storm subcompact that I will be doing shortly. I think you guys are going to really like those as well. They have some really, really, really good um, things about them that I definitely like and recommend to other people. So, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I am Brian Redmond. This is the United Guns of America uh, channel. And as always, remember, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Peace, and I'm out.